From Hollywood, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show for Hormel and Spam. an answer to that age-old question, what can I give the family for breakfast? Serve Spam and Eggs, a breakfast surprise that is completely satisfying and so easy to fix. Just open a can of Spam, cut off thin slices of this delicious meat, and fry quickly in a hot pan. With eggs sunny side up, those tender, juicy, sizzling hot slices of Spam are sure to please every appetite. Isn't it true the only reason you use a certain kind of food is because it's good and good for you? Friends, you'll find both delicious taste, and top-notch quality in Spam. A perfect blend of pork shoulder with ham meat added. Pre-cooked to preserve all the natural juicy flavor of these choice cuts of meat, seasoned according to Spam's carefully guarded formula, this grand-tasting meat of many uses makes the hit cold or hot. Ask for Spam, S-P-A-M, when you shop tomorrow. Serve Spam and eggs. And then try the other easy recipes on the label. And here they are, your two Spambassadors of fun, George and Gracie. Well, thank you very much. Am I happy tonight? Oh, you should be, George. Winning that $200,000 breach of contract suit against Elsie Trellefast. And boy, did I celebrate. So you know that judge took me home after the trial, and he tried to kiss me, but I wouldn't let him. He tried to kiss you? Yeah. He must be a pretty good lawyer. What makes you think so? Well, all evening he kept trying to break my will. (laughs) Gracie, that happens to be a very fine judge. Did you know that he's greatly feared on the bench? Well, I don't know about the bench, but he certainly scared the life out of me in the rumble seat. (laughs) Anyway, I'm very happy that the case is over. Let's forget it. Yes, George, it must be quite an ordeal to have the arm of the law after you. Oh, that's nothing. I had it around me. What a feeling that was, to get to a court and find out the man I hit with a car is the judge who was trying my case. And as soon as I saw him, I got five years older. Oh, good, George. Now you can start collecting your Social Security. (laughs) Nice going, bud. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Well, running into the judge was nothing to worry about, though. It was just a little accident. Nothing to worry about? Do you know that... Do you know what you can get in Los Angeles for hitting a pedestrian? Yeah, a driver's license. (laughs) Well, anyway, I want to thank you all for being my character witnesses. Saben que yo estoy muy orgulloso de Señor Burns por la manera. Yes, I get it, I get it. Yes, fine, fine. Party, what is Señor Lee saying? He was proud of you at the trial when you took the offensive. Oh, well, thanks, Señor Lee. In fact, he says you were the most offensive man in the whole courtroom. <laughs> That's right. If that, if that Artie Shaw doesn't keep that guitar player quiet, he's going to find a pink slip in his envelope. George, I don't think Artie Shaw wears a pink slip. <laughs> Of course he doesn't wear a pink slip. I know something that you don't know. <laughs> Arnie, what's the matter with that Senor Lee? Well, he's unhappy about his job. Well, if he's unhappy on Saturday night, why don't you give him a little extra? A little extra wouldn't make him, un- wouldn't make him happy. I mean. Well, your little red-headed extra from Paramount would. <laughs> Gracie, that's only a platonic friendship. Should happen to me. <laughs> uh, Senor Shaw, why don't you introduce me to her? She's very cuticle. <laughs> Cuticle? Hey, Don Juan, let me give you a little bit of advice. Women are slow poison. I'm in a hurry. (laughs) Did you 
know that I had less trouble in court last week than I'm having here? Oh, you should worry, George. You saved two hundred thousand dollars. What two hundred thousand? Boy, if I had that kind of money, I'd spend one hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-five cents for spam. What's the other nickel for? Uh, call up the grocer in case I run, run out. out. I <laughs> thought so. Yes. Well, stop with that two hundred thousand dollars, Gracie. You know I haven't got that kind of money. Oh, what about your salary each week? What about your hat? <laughs> What, uh, what are you laughing at? I don't get it. <laughs> Why? Why does everybody pick on me? Am I always going to be a fall guy? Am I such an awful dope? Am I ever going to mean anything on this program? Is he? Tune in next week and find out. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I'm going down to write out that check for $25 for court expenses, which will clear up that Elsie Trallifast case once and for all. Don't pay it. Don't pay it? No. Today is the last day, and if I don't pay it, I'll be sued for contempt of court. My friend Millard Byer will fix it for you. Don't pay it. Millard Byer? Yes. Who's he? Probably some small-time fixer. Small-time? He only happens to be on the crime commission. The crime commission? Sure. Every time there's a crime, he gets a commission. <laughs> but look, Gracie, it's only $25. Don't I... pay it. Millard will fix it for you. I'll phone him. Well, what can I do? Oh, uh, let me see now. Where can he be? Oh, oh, yes. Operator, operator, give me the Cotton Club, New York City. New York City. Hello? Cotton Club? Is Miller Dyer there? Oh. That's swell. That's good. That's wonderful. Gracie, this is costing a fortune. Is Millard Byer there? No, that's grand. Wait a minute. What? What's marvelous? What's grand? What's marvelous? The music of the Cotton Club. Wanna to listen to it? It's swell. Give me that phone. Give me that. <laughs> now this movie, Bad Charlie and Little will sing I'll Never Smile Again. Calling New York City to save twenty five dollars. I'll never smile again mm, until I smile at you. So if you Gracie, my I don't advice... want to hear any more about Millet Buyer. That last call cost me $19. I've got to pay this $25 court expenses. Today is the last day, so stay out of it. <laughs> now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Gracie. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I know you were trying to help me. Oh, forgive me, Gracie. Now I feel awful. I feel like a skunk, a scoundrel, a rat. Gracie, will you please forgive me? I'm not crying about that. No? What are you crying about? Did you see that picture, Rebecca? It was very sad, but will you stop crying? I still haven't sent the check. So George, before you, you do that, let me make one more tiny little phone call to Millard. Well, all right, but no New York. No. 
Number, please. Give me Gladstone 1131. That's better. Montreal. Montreal. Montreal, Canada speaking. I want to speak to Millard Byer. How do you spell the first name? With difficulty. Did you say Hillard Byer? What? Did you say Hillard Byer? No, Millard Byer. M as in Millard. I as in Millard. L as in Millard. A as in Millard. R as in Millard. And D as in Dave. Here's your party. Hello, Dave speaking. Dave? How do you spell it? D is in Dave, A is in Dave, V is in Dave, E is in Elmer. Hello, Elmer. Hello, Dave. What's Wh- going on here? Where's Take Miller? it easy. He's out with Slav Go Vorka pitch. How do you spell it? S is in Dave, Ellis. Look, will you hang up? Hang up! That call will be $152. Charge it to George Burns. $152? Give me that phone. Who's this? This is George Burns. George Burns of the radio? Yes, George Burns of the radio. I never miss you. You don't miss me? I don't hear you and I don't miss you. Thanks. <laughs> Gracie, so far it cost me $171 to save $25 and I just assumed... George, I just thought of something. You saved $200,000 in that Elsie Trellifast case and if you'd like to go into business with me... Look, look. Could... I don't want to go into any business. I'd like to pay my court costs. Today is the last day. Judge, you, you better go into some business because the way the income tax is today... What do you know about income tax? What is income tax? Well... Yeah, what is it? The way it works is the government takes your salary. Yes. Uh, that's it. The government takes your salary. You said it. George, you don't have to invest all that $200,000. I've got $200,000? Who believes that? You know, I spend a few dollars. Who believes that? <laughs> It cost me $50,000 a year to live. It isn't worth it. <laughs> it is worth it. Who believes that? <laughs> Look, will you people stop worrying about me? Uh, Senor Burns? I've got my own troubles, you know. Senor Burns? I've got to send that check back. Hey, Poopsie! And... <laughs> stop calling me Poopsie! What is it? Uh, Senor Burns, if you want to go into business, why don't you buy a string of racehorses like Ben Crosby? <laughs> It's not bang, it's bing. Bang. Bing. Bang. Bing. Bang. Bing. It's 4th of July? (laughs) Anyway, racehorses are not Crosby's business. That's his hobby, horses. And they run like hobby horses. (laughs) Now, stop. I've had enough of this. I've got to make out that check for $25. Today is the last day. But, George... I don't want to be helped anymore. Gracie's silly phone calls have... They've already cost me $171. Three hundred and twenty. Three hundred and twenty? I did it again. (laughs) You did it again? Honolulu. You called Honolulu? Miller Byer wasn't there. And what cost all that money? Well, I spoke to a hula dancer, and you know what gossips they are. Hula dancers are gossips? I never saw such (laughs) busybodies. Gracie, I owed the court a few dollars, which I was very happy to pay. And now I owe the phone company $320. 480 480 I'm going to do it again. You're going to do it again? Give me the phone. Get away from that phone. Get away from that phone. Gracie, get away from that phone. Sound man, will you open the door? Four years in Harvard, and this is what I do for a living. Everything happens to me. Hello. Oh, Hello. Don't you remember me? I'm your brother, Willie. Oh, sure, I remember you. I'll send you the $20 at the end of the week. Well, I thought maybe if I made up a joke, you'd make it 30 Willie, look, will you go home? Go home. I have a very funny joke. Have you got a sleeping tablet? Why, have you got a headache? No, that's not the joke. You're just supposed to say why, and then you hear some stuff. <laughs> well, all right. Why do you want a sleeping tablet? I've got a date with a dream. <laughs> no. No. Don't forget to send me the 20. Okay, goodbye. By the way, Goldie's little boy got a gold star for being a monitor. That makes me very happy. Goodbye. <laughs> Look, sound man, the roof of the building will cave in with those door slams. You know, there are worse jobs than being a sound man. Mr. Burns, my friends will be very glad to hear that. Good. You see, one of them wrote a treatise on technocracy. Another one discovered the new element, thermalin. Another one of them won the Phillips Prize for chemical research. And they've all invited me to the annual outing of our honorary society. And I suppose they're ashamed of you being a sound man. They are. Then why did they ask you along to the outing? 
I am the only one who has a car. <laughs> I better write out that check before it's too late or up. Where's, where's Gracie? I'm here. Gracie, are you still on the phone? Oh, please, please. Hello? What? What's that you say? There was virus in there? Gracie, why are you speaking so loud? Well, you got to talk loud when you talk to Egypt. Egypt? <laughs> Doesn't the Smillard buyer ever go to Pomona or Long Beach? Sorry, Millard buyer isn't here. He left for the West Indies. Have you tried Bahamas? Yes, I've tried Bahamas. But they're very uncomfortable with sleeping, don't you think so? Oh, oh, I sleep. That's an extra $20. Hello, on the phone. Gracie, this is costing me a fortune. <laughs> will you hang up? That will be $700 for three minutes. Charge it to George Burns. $700? I won't pay it. George Burns won't pay that money. He says it's an outrage. He says you've got a lot of nerve, and where do you get that stuff? You just spoke another minute. It's $900. $900? Give me that phone. Operator. It's bad enough to charge $700 for three minutes without charging an extra $200 for a minute of explanation. You can't charge $900. You just spoke another minute. It's $1,100. $1,100? Give me that phone. No, you don't. $1,600 to save $25. Huh, what a phone bill. You don't have to pay it. What do you mean I don't have to pay it? Well, I, I know somebody who can fix it. Operator, give me Newfoundland. Get away from that telephone. Get away from it. Shaw, his clarinet and orchestra playing Begin the Begin. You know, it was Begin the Begin that made Artie Shaw, and it was Artie Shaw that made Begin the Begin. Of course, that was back in 1937 when Begin the Begin began. <laughs> Thanks, George. Now, can I pass the plate? What plate? The one that's loose in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> My brother Willie must have made up that joke. Operator, 
Operator, are you sure Millie Byer isn't there? Percy, are you still on the telephone? Oh, please, George. Operator, have you tried a igloo? Igloo? That's in Alaska. Well, sure. It doesn't cost $700 to call Glendale. $700? Give me that phone. George, while you've got some money left, you'd better go into business with me before it's too late. Look, in the first place, bud, I'm not going into business with you. And in the second place, you're in a business. What business? Selling spam, remember? Why, George, I'm surprised at you. Selling spam isn't a business, it's a pleasure. Oh, I was naughty again. (laughs) So you were. Well, folks, you've all been amused by the stories your children have brought home about their experiences at school. But here's a letter from Winnetka, Illinois, that sort of tickled us. The reason is obvious, as you'll discover in a moment. The writer said, My youngster in the third grade insisted on extra spamwiches in his lunchbox. After a few questions, I found out why. When the youngsters trade sandwiches at school, a spamwich has a trade-in value of two ordinary sandwiches. Now, I don't know how many deals are made each day, the letter concludes, but I thought you might like to know how children regard spam in our neighborhood. Well, mothers, have you tried spam for school lunches? Youngsters go for this delicious meat in a big way. You see, in making spam, Hormel uses the choicest cuts. Pure pork shoulder with ham meat added. All ready to eat as soon as you open the Spam can, this tender, juicy meat saves you time. Whether you fix a school lunchbox or the youngsters come running home at noon, Spam is wholesome food that sticks to the ribs and satisfies the children's taste. So make Spam, which is for school lunches. The directions, along with other cold or hot uses, are right on the label. When you shop tomorrow, ask your food dealer for Spam, a Hormel product. Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it, cold or hot, spam hits the spot. Well, slice it, dice it, dice it, slice it. No matter how I slice it, I'm still in the ground. Fine thing. To save $25, I now owe the phone company $3,200. 3700 3200 3700 3200 I know something that you don't know. You did it again. Tahiti. Tahiti? I phoned during a hurricane. Mildred Byer wasn't there. Hmm? Neither was Tahiti. <laughs> Gracie, some dark night when nobody is looking... Judge, I... you don't have to worry anymore. I don't. Huh? Now, I'm not going to make any more phone calls. Oh, well, at last... <laughs> I told the long-distance operator to spare no expense and for her to locate Millard Byer. I see. That's much better. Look, Gracie, some dark night when nobody is looking. Hello? South Africa calling. We have information concerning Millard Byer. $500. Collect. Charge it to George Burns. I'm nicely going bankrupt. Copycat. Quiet. Here's your party. Thanks. Hello, America. Stanley speaking. Have you found Millard Byer? Millard Byer? I'm still looking for Dr. Livingston. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, it cost me $500 to find out that Stanley is still looking for Livingston. Come in. Mr. Burns? That's right. I'm from the sheriff's office. I have a warrant for you for failure to pay your court expenses. Court expenses? You mean the $25 I've been trying to pay all evening? Well, here it is. I'm sorry, brother, but it's too late now. But, mister, I always pay my bills on time, don't I, Artie? That's right, mister. He always pays my salary on time. You see? 50 cents down and the rest on time. <laughs> Now, look, I'm sorry. I'll have to take this warrant. It's Judge Hamill's orders. Judge Hamill, that old fogey... Just a moment. Judge Hamill is the best judge in this county. Next best. What do you mean, next best? Of all the judges in the county, he next best. (laughs) Well, mister, I'm not going to take this warrant because I had every intention of paying the... Paying the $25. Uh, Senor Sheriff, don't worry. Senor Burns has an honest face. Really? Honest, that's a face. <laughs> now, look, I'm not going to take that warrant. Well, you'll have to. Well, give I... it to me. Gracie, Gracie, you can't tear that up. We certainly can. Tearing a warrant, eh? Well, mister, you'll be fined $1,000 for contempt of court. Oh, yeah? Well, George knows no advice who can fix it for him. Someone who can fix it, eh? Well, that's bribery. That'll cost you another thousand dollars. I didn't say anyone was going to fix it for me. Now, denying it, eh? Well, that's perjury. But... <laughs> That'll cost you another thousand dollars. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you ever hear of me? I happen to be George Burns of the radio, and I get five thousand dollars a week. For what? For being a comedian. Taking money under false pretenses. <laughs> Well, 
Now you are in trouble. I'll see you in court. Well, Gracie, I can thank you for all of this. Oh, it was nothing. I'd do it for anybody. Instead of paying $25, I wind up paying $25,000. Hello? This is Zanzibar calling. Zanzibar? Is the Noah's buyer there? No, he left last week for Mandalay. Mandalay? Where's Mandalay? Where the dawn comes up like thunder Out of China Cross the bee George, it's a George Burns Give me that phone, give me that phone And I don't want any more phone calls Don't touch that phone Well, it might be no advice. I don't care, don't touch that phone Well, never mind Just say I'm not in Hello, what? Who? George Burns? Oh, I'm sorry, he's not here, goodbye mm. Oh, you should have answered it who was it? Miller Byer? Hmm? No, it was the Pot of Gold program. The Pot of Gold? an easy way for you to get A-plus from your children on the school lunches you fix. Serve Spam. This grand-tasting meat makes a hit with active children who want food with a swell flavor, food that fills you up. You'll like Spam because this satisfying meat is all ready to eat as soon as you open the can. Just slice Spam and make spam sandwiches for the lunchbox. Or serve plain with a vegetable, bread and butter, and milk if the youngsters pile in on you at noon. Let Spam, S-P-A-M, solve your school lunch problems. Ask your food dealer for Spam, and be sure to try the easy recipes on the label. Well, thank you, bud. Well, Gracie, say goodnight. Good night. Judge, are you going home? No, I'm good and sore. $25,000 for phone calls. Mr. Burns, you've got no, no reason to be sore. You had a swell show tonight. I watched it from the first row. Well, who are you? I'm Millard Byer. Good night, folks. Good night. <laughs> again next Monday night, same time, same station, for another George Burns and Gracie Allen show, with Artie Shaw and his orchestra and the smoothies. Until then, this is Bud Easton reminding you to remember that cold or hot, spam hit the spot. Have you tried Hormel Chili Con Carne? You may think you don't like chili, but Chili Con Carne, the way Hormel makes it, is different and everybody likes it. Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel Chili Con Carne tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.